Given that Star Wars is one of the most popular and iconic franchises in cinema history, it's little surprise that just about everyone in Hollywood wants to be a part of it. And given the sheer number of now successful actors who fail to get cast in Star Wars, we've heard some fascinating stories about auditions that turned out to be total banthapoodoo. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 actors who totally blew Star Wars auditions. Number 10. Tom Holland. Before the role of Finn in The Force Awakens went to John Boyega, Tom Holland was also in consideration. In an interview with Backstage, the Spider-Man actor confirmed that he got far into the casting process, having had, quote, four or five auditions for the role, but his fate was sealed when he failed to keep a straight face during his final audition. In Holland's own words, quote, I remember doing this scene with this lady, bless her, and she was just a drone. So I was doing all this, like, we gotta get back to the ship, and she was going, bleep, bloop, bloop, bleep, bloop. I just couldn't stop laughing. I found it so funny. And I felt really bad because she was trying really hard to be a convincing android or drone or whatever they're called. Holland added that this audition, quote, wasn't his best moment. Though, given that he landed on his feet with Spider-Man the very next year, a part he surely wouldn't have been able to play if he was already locked into Star Wars, it's tough to lament what might have been. Plus, and this kind of goes without saying, Boyega absolutely nailed the part. Number 9. Saoirse Ronan during pre-production of The Force Awakens, Saoirse Ronan was reported to be in contention to play the film's female lead, a fact which Ronan herself actually confirmed to Sky Arts in late 2013, several months before the film's cast was formally unveiled. However, a few weeks later in an interview with IndieWire, Ronan revealed that she lost out on the Star Wars role, and seemed to express regret about ever discussing it publicly before the cast was announced. She said that, quote, I don't have Star Wars. I don't have the role. I just shouldn't have said anything. Given director J.J. Abrams' fondness for secrecy and Hollywood etiquette dictating that actors generally don't discuss roles they're up for while the casting process is still ongoing, it's entirely possible that Ronan's loose lips contributed to her losing out the role to newcomer Daisy Ridley instead. Ronan clearly would have knocked Ray out of the park, though there's also something to be said about hiring a basically unknown actor who brings no star baggage with them at all. Number 8. Alan Rickman Believe it or not, the late, great Alan Rickman was indeed up for a role in Episode 6, a whole five years before he finally made his screen debut as Hans Gruber in Die Hard. J.W. Rinsler's fantastic book, The Making of Star Wars Return of the Jedi, details that Rickman auditioned for Moff Jedrod, the commanding officer of the second Death Star, a part that ultimately went to Michael Pennington. Though Rickman himself never spoke publicly about trying out for Star Wars during his lifetime, the book reveals that he auditioned for Jer Jared with a big, slow, low voice, which evidently didn't go down well with the film's casting team. I can maybe see how that slow, Gruber-esque voice wouldn't have played as well in a scene with someone as big and scary as Darth Vader. Thankfully, everything worked out for Rickman in the end, though. He just had to wait a little bit longer for his big break. Number 7. Michael B. Jordan just like Tom Holland, Michael B. Jordan was another actor who was up for the role of Finn in The Force Awakens, though told Variety in a 2021 interview that he, quote, definitely bombed his audition. Jordan added that he struggled with the film's secretive audition process, where actors weren't given material from The Force Awakens' actual script to read, but instead handed mocked-up scenes intended to reflect the tone of the final movie without the risk of leaks. Jordan said that, quote, I couldn't wrap my brain around some of the sides because you know when you're reading for these high-level projects, there's never really any specificity in the sides. Everything's like super vague. Everything is in secret. Reading through, I just couldn't connect it. It's tough to picture an actor as talented as Jordan straight up flunking any audition in all honesty, but given that the Star Wars rejection freed him up to star in Creed 2 and Black Panther, he shouldn't have any regrets about blowing it. Number 6. Sylvester Stallone Unlike every other actor on this list, Sylvester Stallone was acutely aware that he wasn't the right fit for Star Wars, but being fresh off the success of Rocky, he auditioned for the part of Han Solo anyway. 
In an interview with Jimmy Fallon, uh, Sly revealed that he knew George Lucas wasn't interested in him for the role the moment he entered the room. And so, shortly after beginning the audition, he simply told Lucas, quote, let me just make it easy for you. I would look like crap in spandex, leotards, and a ray gun. Guys in space don't have this face. A slightly ironic remark given his future role in the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. And I would absolutely watch a spin-off about that crew because they're fun, they're really cool. With that, Stallone took his leave. Harrison Ford got the career-defining part of Han, and Sly went off to turn Rocky into a franchise instead. In Stallone's own words, everything worked out fine. Give or take a paradise alley or staying alive here or there. Number five, Eddie Redmayne. If things had turned out differently, Eddie Redmayne could have ended up playing villain Kylo Ren in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it right now, boy, did we dodge a bullet with this one. But no offense, Eddie. In an interview with Uprox, the Oscar winner confirmed just how catastrophically he bombed his audition. Like Michael B. Jordan, he struggled with the vagueness of the audition process and resorted to putting on a voice that didn't go down well at all. He said that, quote, with films that top secret, they don't give you the actual lines. So they give you a scene from Pride and Prejudice, but then they tell you you're auditioning for the baddie. If you're me, you then put some ridiculous voice on. That was really a hilarious moment because it was Nina Gold, who I have to thank a lot because she's cast me in several films. And she was just sitting there and I was trying again and again with different versions of my kind of voice. And after like 10 shots, she's like, you got anything else? And I was like, no. Unlucky for Redmayne, but hard to think of anyone doing that part as well as Adam Driver. Number four, Taisa Farmiga. On a recent episode of the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, Taisa Farmiga revealed that she auditioned for a role in The Last Jedi, which most have assumed to be Finn's love interest Rose, as was eventually played by Kelly Marie Tran. Famiga, who is a lifelong Star Wars fan, detailed her excitement at going to audition, which she ultimately felt had a negative impact on her performance for the casting team. She said that, quote, I know at that one audition, I didn't do so well because I wanted it so badly. That's why I try to keep my expectations. I, I couldn't do it. It was also hard because those auditions were, it was one of the few times that I had to do a cold read where they didn't send you the materials before. You certainly can't blame Vermigo for getting excited about auditioning for a Star Wars movie, even if this may have compromised her chances in the end. Number three, Kelsey Grammer. Oh, hell yeah. Like Sylvester Stallone, a young Kelsey Grammer was in the mix for Han Solo and went to audition for George Lucas, which basically turned out to be a brief conversation between the two before Lucas sent him on his merry way. In an interview with Conan O'Brien, Grammer revealed that Lucas took one look at him and told him he was too old to play the quote, younger guy, Luke Skywalker, and too young to play the quote, older guy, Obi-Wan Kenobi but might suit the sci-fi fairy tales John Wayne type character, which of course is Han Solo. Grammar was confident that he could play the part, while Lucas told him that he'd think about it, and that was the last that Grammar ever heard from the director. The Fraser actor said that he moved on with his life and forgot about the audition, and two years later, while working as a theater actor, he went to see Star Wars and had a sudden moment of realization that this was the movie where he auditioned for the quote, weird guy, that guy Lucas. He added with a smirk that he quote, really missed one there, though accepted that things eventually worked out well for him regardless. Number two, Glenn Powell. Glenn Powell is on quite the roll right now between Top Gun Maverick, Anyone But You, Hitman, and Twisters, but he very nearly came to mainstream prominence a few years earlier as he was one of Disney's final prospects to portray a young Han Solo in Solo, A Star Wars Story, which is probably one of the most underrated entries in the franchise. I really, really, really love that movie. In a recent interview with GQ, Powell revealed that he came extremely close to winning the role, but quote, blew that final audition, prompting Disney to go with Alden Ehrenreich instead, who I must say, in my personal opinion, did a really good job. In any case, it was a bit of a blow for Powell, who was struggling to become a known quantity in Hollywood at the time, though added that given his recent successes, he can quote, joke about it now. 
It's certainly easy to see how Pao would have been a fine fit for the role of a young Han, rocking both the chiseled good looks and cocksure charm necessary to pull it off. But at the same time, Aaron Wright did a stellar job with a basically thankless task, so I think everything worked out for the best in this specific scenario. And number one, Charlie Cox. And we've saved surely the funniest botched audition for last, with Daredevil star Charlie Cox's spectacularly bungled Star Wars tryout. Like Powell, Cox is up for a young Han Solo in Solo A Star Wars Story. Though his inability to disconnect himself from the blind Marvel superhero he's best known for playing ultimately sabotaged his audition. In a 2016 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Cox stated that because he'd spent two years playing a blind character and gotten into the habit of not making eye contact while performing, he instinctively did that during his Star Wars audition. This prompted the casting director to ask Cox why he wasn't making eye contact, which likely didn't give them much confidence that the the Matt Murdock star would be a good fit to play the cocky rogue. Cox said of the audition, quote, I never got invited back, probably because they couldn't figure out why I was acting like a complete idiot. The man without fear, but also the man with a less varied career. Yeah, no, that, that wasn't good. Amazing Daredevil, and Star Wars would have been lucky to have him. 